All right. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, people, for uh, taking time out. And again, 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 my sincere apologies for the slip up. Uh, I should have scheduled this meeting, but somehow I got uh, very busy with my work and it totally slipped my mind. My sincere apologies, but I hope the meeting will be worth it uh, and you will get to know much, much more about Toastmasters. So let's try to make this an interactive session. Yeah. Uh, how many of you know uh, about the origination of Toastmasters? Do people want to come on camera? I know Mukund. Okay, great. Can you let us know? Can you tell me a little bit about uh, how did it all start or, and uh, you know, uh, where did it start? How did it start? Yeah, uh, it's uh, started by uh, Midley in uh, 1924, uh, I guess. I'm, I'm uh, uh, not sure, but um, when he was... Uh, with the youth Christian uh, club. So they were facing an issue with the uh, public speaking. So he started it. Now it's spread across around uh, 170 countries with the uh, 3 lakh membership. Right. Yeah. No, you're you are almost there, uh, yeah. though you're not completely correct, yeah. but you're almost there. So this is something that was, as you rightly said, was started by Sir uh, Ralph C. Smedley. I don't know if he's knighted, so I'm not sure if I can call him Sir, but his name is Ralph C. Smedley. Yes. And he started this in 1924, uh, you know, in Santa Ana, California. Okay. Uh, so he, I, as Deepak was mentioning earlier, uh, you know, this is about. Uh, uh, the Young Men's Christians Association, right? He was part of Young Men's Christians Association and he saw a huge dearth in the communication skills of uh, of, of uh, the, the people over there. So he thought of starting this movement called Toastmasters. So, and what started then today is some like something like around 270,000 members in 14,000 clubs in 150 countries, right? Uh, so, that is that it's called a movement more 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 than a, a club. It is like a movement that has been spread all over uh, the place, uh, all over the world now. So that is basically Toastmasters, and that is how it, it got originated. So currently, it is headquartered in uh, uh, Englewood, Colorado, Colorado State. Uh, currently, that is where it is headquartered. E N G L E W O double O D. So that's the place where it is currently headquartered. Okay. So now let me share my screen first and let us go through the agenda. We have a few more people joining in. Okay. Welcome, welcome Sanjana, welcome Saurabh. We have just started, I was just talking about how the Toastmaster originated in the year 1924 in Santa Ana, California, and uh, the, the Ralph C. Smedley is the gentleman who started this when he was part of YMCA, England's Christians Association, way back in 1924. And today we have around 270,000 members uh, in 150 countries with 14,000 clubs. So that is the uh, uh, that is how it all started. Uh, so now I'm, I was just about to share my screen and uh, we will see what is the agenda that we have today. Please let me know once you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So, so now you guys have joined the Toastmasters, right? Now, next what? What do we do once you have joined the Toastmasters? Uh, 
So let's see what we have in our agenda today. So we'll talk about a little bit about your goals, uh, the club meeting roles that we have, the pathways, which everyone will be interested in, then about the mentoring, what are the leadership opportunities that we have, uh, what are the next steps, and what is the support that you will get, and what does the club expect out of you? Yeah, does this look like a good agenda to all of you? Yes. Okay, let's make it interactive. Uh, if you guys want to have any questions, please stop me, and uh, you know we, we will take up your questions as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. This is something that will have to be filled up in the new member profile, right? How many of you have filled this new member profile? Can I uh, see a show of hands? How many of you filled this new member profile? Nobody? I have done. Uh, who is that? I'm sorry. Pushpa. Oh, hi. Okay. Okay, you have done the new member profile. All right. Yeah. So uh, you would have gone through uh, the various fields that are there, right? In that, let me yes, just sir. again quickly share my screen for those of you who haven't done that. So this is the new member profile that you guys are expected to update. Uh, name best way to contact you, occupation, accomplishments and interests, personal and career goals, name of the sponsor if applicable, name of the mentor. Okay, what are your leadership goals? What objectives do you have to accomplish as a member of this club? Does your job or profession require you to speak in front of an audience? How do you describe your current skill level as a speaker? How would you describe your current skill level as a leader? Do you have any specific concerns relating to speaking in front of of an audience? Do you have any specific concerns about leading a group? Uh, what did you decide? Why did you decide to join a Toastmasters club? Uh, what specific skills do you want to improve? Right? This is something that you'll have to fill up and you have to give it to your mentor or uh, give it to your mentor. Yeah? So this is the new member profile. Uh, can I uh, assume that all of you guys will go ahead and fill up your new member profile now? Uh, this is again available in the Toastmasters website. You just have to search for it and you will get the new member profile. You can go there and um, select, or even you can just Google it also, you will get it. It will take you directly to the Toastmasters international website and you can go ahead and uh, uh, fill up the form and you can share it with your mentor. Is it okay? Can I get where a show of we, Yes. Where can we find this file? Uh, you, you can just Google it for one. Uh, what I did was I just Googled new member profile Toastmasters and it took me to the website and uh, I was able to download that form. Okay, got it. And do we have to send this to our mentor? Yeah, you will have to uh, send this to your mentor. Share it with your mentor, have a discussion with them and uh, share it with your mentor. Okay, clear. Okay, excellent. Okay, once uh, that is done, we'll go to the next one. Uh, which is the club meeting rules. Or sorry, there's one more. I stopped sharing. Let me quickly share the screen back. So the next thing that we will discuss is how can we support you? Okay, is there anything specific you want us to do to help you meet your goals? Or do you want to set your own time frames or do you want us to nudge you to participate? So what is it that you want us to do? So do you want us, the VP education, to be nudging you, asking you to participate, take up roles, take up, give your speeches, etc.? Or is it something that you want to set your own time frame? You will say, okay, I've taken this path in next say six to nine months, I will complete my pathway, all the five levels. I'm just giving an example. So it depends on how you want to meet your goals. Yeah. So can we have a couple of few people telling us how, what is it that you expect? Is this, is this something that you want us to 
do or can you guys uh, you know take the ownership of improving your communication skills and come out with your own time frame i'm and, good yeah uh, so if we are ready with the speech uh, and let's say i want to give the speech the next week is it okay that uh, i approach vp education and ask if there are slots uh, open that day yes you can oh. surely approach if there yeah. is something available she will be able to slot you then and there yeah. if not she will give you a date and time when you can give your speech okay yeah, but the thing here is you know you have to make a plan a time frame a 6 months to 9 months wherein you will go ahead and complete all your five levels otherwise you know what is happening now is that the vp ed will call you ask you to take up a role ask you to take a give a speech etc so that you know uh, that can be done i'm not saying it cannot be done but if it comes from you it will be it will be good that's the point where oh. okay till now i have been just waiting for uh, vp education to approach me for the speech slot so i was not known, knowing this yeah you can surely i mean it is expected that you people go ahead and uh, talk to uh, talk to your vp okay is it clear to everybody can i please have a show of hands on the support that is required ankur yes sumit yes sudhir yes what about deepika rishi rahul sanjana saurabh rishi yes deepak yes reema s yes. all right okay sumit you have a question pushpak yes thank you yes yes yeah. i have a question yes. uh, just wanted to know how soon uh, i mean those masters i mean club expect to for a new member to give ice breaker speech it all depends on when you are ready okay so even before you give a speech you please attend few meetings and you know understand how the meeting proceeding is all about of course i we will talk about that in the orientation also what are all the things uh, that are expected of you but before you go ahead and give a speech just observe around two meetings or three meetings this would be my suggestion uh, before you give your ice breaker Clear? Okay. Yes. All right. So I will again share my screen, and now we will go ahead and go to the next slide where we will talk about the meeting rules. Okay. Now, what is a meeting role i mean how many of you have already attended the meetings so far i'm sure many of you would have attended the meetings right yes yes okay all right i'm not able to see the screen that is why i keep uh, waiting for someone to answer i am i am looking at my own presentation so uh, each meeting role has a unique set of responsibilities right uh, there are skills for each role which you can now what are the roles that are currently there in our you know a typical meeting so in a typical meeting we have a toast master this is and we will go one by one toast master is one role grammarian is the second our counter is the third timer is the fourth table topic speaker is fifth table topic master is the seventh there will be a speaker or speakers and there will be evaluator or evaluators and then there will be a general evaluator now there is one role that you would have found in the gabis that is missing here can you guys take a guess which role that is people who have attended the meetings is it presiding officer and uh, no there is yes, one sir. role that we are uh, We we have in gabbies, you know. Listener. No, that will come. Okay, yeah, that's right. Sorry, I will change my statement. There are two rules. One is listener, absolutely. Which is the other one? And this is role is you can say uh, somewhat unique to the gabbies. 
table topic evaluator yeah yeah correct correct exactly very good who was that pushpa hi pushpa okay table topic evaluator this is another role which is pretty unique to gabis where we give evaluation for even the table topics as well you may not find this in other clubs yeah so these are the roles now let's quickly go role by role what is what is there in each of the role right first is the toastmaster so this is basically the the host he is called the host so he is actually responsible for starting and ending the meeting on uh, on time very important he is responsible for starting the the actual meeting you know once the presiding officer hands over to the toastmaster the toastmaster you know, he will uh, uh, he is responsible for uh, talking a little bit about the theme he is responsible for uh, uh, introducing the speakers uh, uh, you know he is responsible uh, to make sure uh, for uh, introducing the role takers like the general evaluator and then the speakers and then the table topic master uh, and then finally the general evaluator and end he has to conclude on time right this is basically the toastmaster or tmod as we call him the toastmaster of the day so he is the one who will uh, you know uh, who will host the whole meeting he will uh, if the presiding officer does not introduce the guests then the toastmaster it becomes his responsibility to uh, request the guests to speak a sentence or two so he is the basically the total host so what is recommended over here is that you know before you take up this role you attend a few meetings observe how a tmod actually behaves what are all the things he does right make a note of it and only after that you take up this role so before that please don't go ahead and take up the tmod role because you might end up fumbling up a lot and mm -hmm. there is a lot of lot at stake for the tmod because he has to be very careful he should not miss out any introductions he has to keep a uh, note of time and so on. so so that's the reason why uh, attend few meetings observe and once you are confident take up this role uh we'll go to the next role the grammarian so the grammarian is one who will make sure that you know uh, we improve our grammar and vocabulary okay it is not necessary that we should all be perfect in english none of us are we all make errors and it is the grammarian who uh, should be able to uh, point out the errors and who should also be able to point out the um, point out the errors and who should also be able to point out the good things a good uh, uh, figure of speech that has already that is being communicated in the meeting right he should come and uh, he or she should come and talk about it. okay so that is the grammarian role so for to, to to be able to be a grammarian uh, you should have at least some sound knowledge of english you should be able to recognize when the errors are being made you should be able to recognize the good figures of speech that is being spoken some good sentences some good quotes um some some good sayings all these things uh, you should be able to recognize and then uh, you you will be able to give that in your report at the end of the meeting right so uh, that is one of the basic requirement of uh, um, what i can say is an unwritten uh, requirement that is there for a grammarian right because if the grammarian is not uh, really very good in english then there is no point right what can he point out or what can he uh, uh, you know highlight uh, in his report not much so that's the reason why uh, you know a, a little bit of knowledge a sound knowledge of english is required for a grammarian okay and then we we'll go to the next role the next role is that of an r counter here is where the r counter what does the r counter do the r counter actually uh, notes down the filler words the pauses so one mistake that we do here is that uh, which i have seen in many of the meetings is the r counter does not report some long pauses okay a short pause a pause which is part of a speech is fine right apart from the filler words like a uh, um no and uh, so many other filler words i'm sure which you would have already uh, you know um, as well but so uh, 
like this, there are so many filler words that will keep coming in. Now, when do filler words come in? Filler words come in when your thought process has stopped a little bit and you do not know what to speak next. Your search, your mind is searching for what to speak next, and that is when to cover up for that uh, uh, for that gap, we start using our uh, uh, filler words. And this, the accounter should be able to recognize whether what is being said is a filler word or is it part of a speech. So then he, the person will have to make a note of it. The good thing about Gabby's is we all we all have a template where we can record all these things. Yeah, and we can just simply submit it at the end of the meeting as our report. But the listening skills, the able to make out the recognizing of the filler word is very important for our counter. So let's move ahead to the next role, which is that of a timer. And a timer role is extremely important, extremely, extremely important, right? So uh, he should be very attentive. Uh, he should start the watch on the dot and the uh, end the clock on the dot for speeches, for evaluations, and for table topics, and for the table topic evaluator. These are the four roles in Gabby's at least. These are the four roles that get timed. So the start time and the end time is extremely important to be noted and reported. And before that, the timer should also make sure that he knows the timings of his speeches. The speeches can be of different lengths of time. Some can be 5 to 7, some can be 10 to 12, some can be 18 to 22. So he should know which speech is uh, uh, how long. And based on that, he should be able to know when to uh, when to show the uh, green card, the yellow card, and the red card. You know the timing is extremely important because if he misses out, then you know uh, there won't be a level playing field uh, because you know we all vote, uh, especially in contests. It's extremely important, but we try to follow the same discipline in our meetings as well. We try to be on the dot. We try to be as accurate as possible as a timer. Okay. We will go to the next rule, which is the table topics. Is a table topic speaker. All right. So uh, here again, uh, the table topic speaker is basically impromptu speaking. Uh, as you all know, uh, a topic is given to you and you should speak for a period of one to two minutes. Uh, you should be able to gather your thoughts then and there and then come out with a speech, right? So there are so many sessions that we have. As you know, right now, our own uh, uh, Toastmaster uh, Aparna is conducting a session on table topics so that we will all get prepared for the contest. She is giving extremely valuable uh, feedback um, you know, on, on the speeches that we are giving. She is giving us topics. So I, I encourage all of you, uh, whenever you get an opportunity to attend any education session. Uh, did anybody have a question? Uh, how often does this contest happen? The table topics and the evaluation? Uh -huh. uh, the contest of uh, for the impromptu, which is happening uh, day after tomorrow. It happens uh, once in six months. Okay. So, uh, or once in a year, so it, it, it is happening now. The next table topic session, I think will only, uh, a contest will be only next year around the same time. But in March, we will have the speech contest. So it could be speech contest and table topic contest, or it could be speech contest and evaluation contest. And again, in the next term, which is July to December, you can have the table topic contest and the evaluation contest, but not the speech contest. Uh, is it confusing, Shrihari? Oh, no, it's clear. Thank you. Okay. All right. So table topics in the meeting, uh, as we are talking about the meeting rules in the table topic, you know, you will be asked, uh, you have to gather your thoughts and you have to come out and speak for a, a one to two. It, it is going to be tough, but that should not stop you from taking part. You know, you should always be enthusiastic to go there and speak something. Over a period of time, you will get to speak the right thing. But... Uh, the 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 environment in the in the in the toastmasters meeting is always that of an encouraging one. Uh, so just don't worry about it. Yes, Sumit, you have a question. 
Yes, I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, I mean, regarding this table topic uh, speaker, uh, because the I mean topics given are, uh, you know, uh, on the spot. So, I mean, how do one, as a new member, how do one prepare for it? Because uh, I tried it on my first uh, uh, meeting when I attended as a guest speaker, uh, guest uh, in the Gabby's, but mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't speak, uh, utter a word, right? Uh, it was blank for me. So could you give us give me some suggestions? How could I improve for, on this table topic speaker? Uh, usually what happens, the table the topics will be something easy ones or it will be based on the theme. Usually. Mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, can you come in, please? I, I mean, your voice was big. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, it's better. Okay. Uh, uh, Saurabh, can you please mute? Saurabh, can you please mute your mic? Host, uh, Mukund, can you please mute Saurabh's mic? Disturbance is coming. Okay, I think he has stopped. I don't think I have to mute him. Yeah, it's okay now. Yeah. So, so Sumit, uh, it's a very good question that you have asked. Most of us who have been in Toastmasters for a long period of time have gone through this journey, have gone through the phase that you are currently going through. Uh, what we have done is, and, and see, you can't, one, one good thing that you can do is to know about the theme beforehand and then come to the meeting. Because usually, usually, but it is this is no guarantee, Usually the table topic master selects the topics based on the theme. So if you do some kind of a reading about the theme, know something about the theme, so uh, when a question is asked or when a topic is given, uh, you will have something in your mind to speak. Okay. Now, uh, now the, the issue is that sometimes it goes blank. That is no problem at all. If it goes blank, my suggestion, my personal suggestion to you is speak whatever you can speak for that one minute. Nobody is going to stop you. It could be. Related I mean, to whatever talk. is coming to my mind. Whatever is coming to the to your mind, just go ahead and talk. You have to talk for a one minute. You can't simply stand there without uttering a word, right? Slowly, you will start talking about based on the theme or based on the topic that has been given to you. That is, this is what I did initially when a topic was given. Uh, and my mind also used to go blank initially. Then I was given this suggestion by my mentor that just speak whatever you want to speak. So I would simply speak about the theme, you know, generally about the theme, though it might not have been related totally to the uh, topic given to me. But nevertheless, I would go and I'll speak on the theme, but I used to ensure I would clock that one minute. That is extremely important. You should be there and you should speak for one minute. Slowly you will learn. Okay, slowly your mind will start thinking about the topic very quickly and you'll start talking. This this is something that I did personally. It might work for some, it might not work uh, for others. But since you asked this question uh, that you're going black, uh, blank, uh, I thought I can give you my own example as to what I used to do when this would happen to me. Okay, thank you. So that is that would be my suggestion. And also uh, what you all can do is whenever you get an opportunity to attend any education session on table topics, right? please go ahead and attend that. It is worth it. right? They will give you so many ideas as to how to speak. Right? Uh, that, is, uh, that way also you can develop your speaking skills. Uh, can, you, uh, can you come again, please? Uh, what did you suggest? I suggest whenever you find an opportunity to attend the education session on table topics, Please make it a point to attend. In the 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 experts in that uh, education session will tell you various other ways of uh, uh, speaking for a table topic, not necessarily the one that I suggested. There are so many other ways uh, which you can make use of and which can be good for you. You got it. Hello. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, you're audible. It's okay. See you. Okay. All right. 
So that is about the table topic. Let's move ahead now. Then the next one now is uh, the table topic master, right? The table topic master is the one who will, uh, you know, get the topics ready. And he is going to give it call each person and give the topic to that person. Okay, one way of doing this is if you become a table topic master, normally what we do is we first call the person who wants to speak or who, who has volunteered to speak or who is being asked to speak and then give the topic. You should never give the topic first and then call the person. That's not the way it is done. You should call the person and then once the person comes on the dais or the stage, then you give the topic. And the person should start, uh, 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 will start speaking. Uh, sorry, I'll just go back uh, to the table topic speaker. Uh, another uh, suggestion here for a table topic speaker is once you get the topic, you don't have to start immediately. You take some four to five seconds uh, to think about the topic, but not more than that. Because if you go beyond five seconds, you, will, you, will, you might get disqualified as a speaker. So you can't take a very long pause. Take some four seconds, five seconds time to think about the topic and then start speaking. Yeah, that is one point that I, I wanted to say and I missed out. So now coming back to the topic master. Yeah, so the topic master will have to call the person. Okay, uh, he will, before that he will spell out the rules, which is basically the timings. Uh, you speak less than one minute, you get disqualified. Uh, you go beyond two and a half minute, you get disqualified. Uh, your speech should be between one to two and a half and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So he will, he will talk about the rules of the game and then he will start calling uh, people and give the topics and, you know, the people will have to start answering, uh, uh, start speaking on the topic. Yeah. So these things are a must, speaking about the rules, speaking about the timing and then uh, getting the people to come on the uh, 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 first and then about the topic. Okay, so you will, what you have to do is, uh, as a table topic master, you have to uh, select the topics in advance. Um, you know, uh, you have to also uh, uh, talk to the TMOD once, try to understand the theme. What is the theme? If you want your topics to be in line with the theme of the meeting, then you understand the theme and then you do your research, you come out with the topics. The topic shouldn't be extremely difficult that nobody can answer. Yeah, uh, as a topic master, table topic master, please ensure that it shouldn't be too difficult or something, uh, you know, you start speaking about rocket science and nobody can answer or nobody can speak on the topics. So it should be something general, uh, not too easy, at the same time, not uh, very tough, uh, something which, will require some amount of difficulty to answer, but it should be doable, right? And you should be able to answer, uh, uh, speak on the topic for a, at least for a period of one minute. So that is something you will have to ensure as a topic master. I will go on to the next one. So now comes the speaker. So the speaker, it, it, it's very clear cut for a speaker. The speaker will have to uh, stick to the pathway, the rules and the guidelines that are there in every pathway that they have selected. Their speech should be according to that, um, uh, right? And your first speech will always be, um, you know, uh, an icebreaker for any pathway. So it'll in level one, the first speech in any pathway is your icebreaker and icebreaker is all about your own self, your ambition, uh, what you have done, your family, uh, your career, et cetera. It's basically to know you better. So that is what uh, the role of the speaker is all about. But they have to stick, uh, you know, very uh, strictly stick to the uh, guidelines that is there in the respective pathways. Then comes the evaluator. Again, for the evaluator, uh, there are certain guidelines given in the pathway as to how a speaker should be evaluated. Uh, they have to, uh, you know, give credence. They should also uh, uh, read the evaluation guidelines um, and then uh, be very attentive when the speech is going on, 
try to relate what is being spoken is in line with the evaluation guidelines. Uh, and what the evaluator normally does in Toastmasters till now is they use the sandwich method. Uh, what is a sandwich method? It's basically you have uh, the recommendations in the beginning, then you have uh, the, the, the feedback, you know, and then again, uh, the commendations. Sorry, commendations, recommendations, commendations. Good points, feedback, and again, good points. So that is called the sandwich method. The evaluator normally uses a Toastmasters meet. So you start with, uh, when you when you evaluate a speech, you take out uh, the good points that you have noted down of the speech, and then you speak about what is it that didn't go all that well, what is your feedback, uh, whether it was in line with the guidelines or not, et cetera, et cetera. And then again, you conclude that with uh, some more good points about the speech. So this is called the sandwich method. This is how... Uh, this is the role of the evaluator. So there could be level one to level five in each pathway. And in each level, there will be somewhere between three to five speeches. And each speech will have its own evaluation guidelines. The evaluator is supposed to go through that and uh, you know come out with the evaluation uh, of the speech. And the timing for the evaluation is two to three minutes. Uh, you can't go beyond three and a half minutes else you will get disqualified. OK. Uh, I will come to the last role, which is the general evaluator. Yes, yeah, Sumit, please go ahead. Uh, I have a question uh, regarding this evaluation of the speech. Like, for yeah. example, uh, you just mentioned that uh, in every pathway, uh, there are different five levels. So let's say if I give icebreaker speech of level one, so uh, how do I know that uh, I have qualified for the level two? Okay, uh, good question. Uh, there is no nothing like a qualification here in Toastmasters. Okay. Okay, so you give a speech, right? The evaluator will suggest something. Okay. Uh, right, so he may so say, he may say, uh, you know, congratulations on completing a level one. Or he may uh, uh, he may also give you some feedback, but it is totally up to you if you want to repeat a speech. Okay, so the same feedback which uh, the evaluator will give me uh, will it be uploaded on the this uh, Toastmasters website on the portal? Uh, no. So there is a way how you will have to uh, update your uh, progress in the Toastmasters International. Okay. Okay. So you will, uh, I'm not sure if you have the time to go through that. So what happens is uh, you will have to go through your entire speeching, speech guidelines in your Postmasters International. Once you log in, uh, you will be selecting your pathway. We will come to that a little later. Once you select your pathway, you start off with your speeches. So level one icebreaker. So there are a good number of material, education material there, which you will have to go through compulsorily uh, for every speech that you give. Level one icebreaker, you go there, they will give you certain guidelines, they will talk to you, some, they will give you some demo speeches, etc. You go through all of that, uh, you will have to first assess where you stand before you give the speech. Once you give the speech, you again go back into the website, into the portal, and then you give the feedback of where you stand now. Now that you have completed your icebreaker, where do you stand? Right? That uh, you'll have to complete your feedback. Uh, once you are completed your feedback, uh, you will you'll click on complete. Uh, then it will go to the VP education for the VP education to approve your speech. Once the VP education approves your speech, then you are done with level one icebreaker, for example. And then you will move on to level two. Yeah, where which is which could be I think speech with a purpose. So a speech with a purpose, you will again prepare your speech. Same thing, you will again go back to the website. You will go to level two. You go through an entire education material. There they will give you a lot of guidance before the speech. After you give the speech, you will go ahead and evaluate again, right? And mark it complete. It will go to your VP Ed and the VP Ed will approve. Once the VP Ed approves, then you are done. Is it clear, Sumit? So there is nothing called uh, that you will qualify to go to level two. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's clear. Yeah. But if you want, you can repeat the speech. If you feel if you do, don't feel very satisfied with what you have done, you may want to go ahead and repeat the speech again. Now, of course, it all depends on the slot the VP head will have to give you, etc. Depending on that, you can go ahead and uh, 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 repeat the speech if you want. Okay. All right. Now the general evaluator. General evaluator is like, uh, you know. Uh, the, the 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 chairman of the evaluation committee, which comprises of the general evaluator and the four members, the taggle is what we call the timer, the R counter, the grammarian, and the listener. So these are the four roles uh, that will help the general evaluator. The general evaluator, what the general evaluator, so evaluator, you will have to play in this role uh, very carefully. So the general evaluator will first uh, talk about uh, the, he will introduce his uh, role players. Uh, we know the TMOD will call the general evaluator initially, even before the speeches start. The Toastmaster will call the general evaluator. And the general evaluator will have to speak uh, or introduce his team, uh, right? And then he will observe the entire proceedings. At what time did the time, uh, meeting start? <clears throat> Uh, you know, uh, did it start on time or not? How did? And he will evaluate all the roles right from beginning, right from the beginning. When I say the sergeant at arms, and then he will evaluate the sergeant at arms whether the sergeant at arms did a proper job or not. Uh, and he will evaluate the the presiding officer. Uh, what did the presiding officer do right, do wrong? Right. Then he will evaluate the toastmaster of the day, uh, and then he will evaluate. Uh, he will request the individual evaluators of the speeches to come and give their evaluation. And please note this point. The general evaluator, more often than not, will not evaluate the speech again. Like he may have a point, he or she may have a point or two about the speech, but they will not go ahead and evaluate the speech again. That's the job of the evaluator. But he can, he or she can evaluate the evaluator on whether the evaluator has done a good job or not, uh, or whatever points that uh, he may have, he or she may have in mind, that he can say. But he will not evaluate the speech itself. Yeah, and uh, so his his role will come after the table topic session is done. So once the table topic session is done, the Toastmaster of the day will call the general evaluator to evaluate. So that is when they will start evaluating right from the beginning. As I said, the sergeant at arms and then the presiding officer and then the postmaster of the day. Uh, and then, the, as I said, evaluate, give a point or two about the speech and then evaluate the evaluator of the speeches. Then evaluate the table topic master. And then he will call his team, the taggle team, to come and give the report, the timer, our counter, um, the grammarian and the listener. So, and once that is done, uh, you know, his his or her role is done. So that is the end. They will hand it back to the postmaster of it. So this is some those some points that you'll have to keep as for, keep in mind as far as the general evaluator is concerned. Okay. Okay, before we go to the pathways, let me stop sharing for a second. And, uh, oh, we still have 12 people, excellent. There was a joke, <laughs> right. So uh, any questions so far before we go to the pathways? On whatever we have discussed till now. Are you all still there? Yes, Mukund. Yeah. Um, Mukund, I have one Please. question. Yeah, Rahul, tell me. Um, how uh, do we evaluate, like, you know, the uh, contest, basically, it happens every day only, like, uh, um, who is the best listener, who is the best uh, grammarian, or, uh, you know, role taker, all these speaker, as well as evaluator. So, um, if a participant wins one, uh, you know, best role taker, then am I audible? 
Yeah, yeah, you are. Go ahead. Yeah. So then, uh, what what are the you know benefits that uh, winner gets like? Sorry, Rahul, I didn't get that question. Uh, any okay. prizes or something uh, which we, we, you we get when you become? We, we will come to that. What is the uh, awards that? Uh, right, right. Yeah, but we will come to that later. Uh, okay. In, in the orientation, yeah. Sure. Other than that, any question on what we have spoken till now, the meeting rules, uh, you know, any any uh, based on this, uh, whatever you have spoken till now, any any questions? Okay, I'll take that as no, and we will go ahead with the pathways. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let me share my screen again. I'll try and close this as soon as possible. I know we have delayed. Yes, Sumit, you have a question? I mean, it's okay. I'll ask later. Uh, I had a question, but uh, I see that we are already at 9.15. Well, it's okay. Uh, yeah, let's keep the questions till the end so that I can complete this thing quickly. Yeah. So now comes the pathways, right? So all of you would have got and uh, welcome email from the Toastmasters International and you would have clicked and you have logged into the Toastmasters uh, website, right? Am I fair in assuming? Yes. yes, we have received. I have received. Yeah, so have you logged into the Toastmasters International through that login and password that you would have got? Yes. How about others? Is there anybody who hasn't yet logged into and selected their pathway? Yes, I have selected nothing. Okay. Anybody who has not selected? I have not, uh, but I am to become member from October. So maybe because of that. From 1st of October. Okay. Okay. Anybody? So I'm assuming everybody else have selected their respective pathways, right? Did anybody take an assessment to know which pathway you have to select? I have. You took an assessment. Very good. But I doubt it is the correct assessment. Sorry, Sudhir? I doubt it was a correct assessment. Why do you say that? Because uh, what I assess, they have assessed me engaging humor, one of the things. Okay. One of the pathways. I have selected that. Uh, and now everybody... Now everybody what? Everybody says that this is very tough. Why you selected this? No, uh, it's it's not like that. It's not at all tough. Um, you just have to stick to the guidelines that are there. Yeah, slowly it, it's better if it is tough also in the beginning. That is fine, uh, but mm -hmm. just go through it. That's all. Okay. 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 I'll go ahead. Uh, So there are 11 unique paths. Uh, some of them are uh, going to be discontinued. I will just come to that in the next slide. Uh, so take the assessment to find the best one for you. So there are some questions that you need to answer. You have to select some three points in that uh, options given to you. And based on that, they will suggest which pathway. I think there will be some two or three pathways. Uh, you can select only one. Uh, once you become a new member, uh, you will have the only the first pathway it comes along with your membership fees. The second pathway, the second pathway is uh, uh, you have to pay for the second pathway uh, if if you are selecting two pathways. So the only first pathway is included in your membership fees, right? So currently there are eleven. Uh, and uh, before I go there, each path has around five levels. Okay, level one, level two, level three, level four, and level five. Okay, and uh, uh, it, it, it comes in increasing difficulty. Right, level one is uh, very easy because usually level one, you have the icebreaker, you have speech with a purpose, you will have um, uh, you know, vo uh, this vocal and body language, vocal variety and body language. And then you will have two speeches in which 
uh, you will give the first speech, you will get evaluated, and then you have to incorporate your evaluation and give the same speech again, or a different speech, but you have to incorporate the uh, evaluation given to you. Usually, I mean, this is how level one is going to be. And then you, based on your path, uh, level two, level three, level four, and level five is what uh, you will have to complete to finish your pathway. Um, level one has, as I said, uh, five speeches. Level two may have four. Level three, maybe some three speeches or four speeches. So uh, overall, you will end up giving somewhere in the around, uh, you know, around 18 to 20 speeches uh, in, or across the five levels. Uh, slightly more than that, but around that much, definitely not uh, beyond what I'm saying. Around 20 speeches in uh, five levels, uh, you will end up giving. You select the pathway. So that is uh, that, that is basically the process. So you will get a welcome email. You will go in. You will take an assessment based on what you have put in as an uh, as your preferences. Uh, the system will come out and give you an option of to select your pathway. You can select the path, right? So that is basically the pathway process. Now let's look at the various pathways that we have. Okay. So there are I said as I said eleven pathways, and as you can see, I have struck out certain uh, uh, certain pathways over here. For example, effective coaching, innovative planning, leadership development, strategic relationship, team collaborations. I have struck this out because these pathways are going to be discontinued. Okay, so some new pathways might come. So if anybody has not yet selected a pathway, please don't select these ones because this will anyway get discontinued. Select only the ones that are uh, uh, that are not struck out in this slide, like dynamic leadership, engaging humor, motivational strategies, persuasive influence, presentation mastery, and visionary communication. You can select these paths. Uh, okay, two, two people have raised their hands. One by one, please. Yeah, Mukund, any reason behind uh, discontinuing these paths? I, to be honest, I don't know the answer. Who is this speaking? I can't Sudhir. see. Yes, yeah, Sudhir, I, I don't know, but I will find out the reason and I will come back to you. Okay. That it, it, the, the mainly it could be that they find that this could already be there in some other pathways. And that's okay. the reason uh, they might have decided to discontinue this, but I, I don't know the answer at this point in time. I will find out and I will come back to you. Okay, sure. The one more person raised the hand. Okay, we will we will go ahead. Uh, so this is about the pathways. You'll have to select your pathway, and then uh, you know you'll have to start going through uh, your each of your uh, levels. So I will I will talk about the pathways currently. First one that we have is uh, the dynamic leadership. So this is to help you uh, improve your skills as a leader, strategic leader. Okay, uh, this path focuses on understanding leadership and communication styles, uh, the effect of conflict on a group, and the skills needed to diffuse and direct conflict. So this is basically what dynamic leadership is all about. Okay, this also emphasizes the development of strategies uh, to facilitate change in an organization or group interpersonal communication and public speaking. Okay, and uh, this path culminates in a project focused on applying your leadership skills. So when it's a culminate in uh, probably around level four, level five, you will be asked to, uh, to some, take up a project where you can apply your leadership skills. Uh, and, and then you'll be asked to give a speech on how actually you did it, right? So everything, there will be a speech but for some, the speeches will be based on a certain projects that you take. Yeah, so this is all about dynamic leadership. Let me go to the next path, engaging humor. So this path, again, uh, is help to build your skill as a humorous and engaging public speaker. Okay, the, the focus here is on understanding your sense of humor and how that sense of humor translates to engaging audience members. Right? Uh, one point here is you have to be very careful when you use humor. As they say, humor is a double-edged sword, right? Uh, a, a joke for you 
a joke for you may not be a joke for someone else. So you have to be extremely careful when you use humor. Uh, you should be very, very sensitive to other uh, people's feelings and beliefs, right? So, uh, you, and you should have a good sense of humor and to your sense of humor, you should be able to engage the audience. So that is that is the objective of this one of engaging humor, okay. And again, this part will uh, this part will end in you giving a humorous speech, uh, which will uh, in which you will uh, you will apply what you have learned in the past four levels. Yeah, that is engaging humor. And then motivational strategies. Here in motivation strategy, it will help you build your skills as a powerful and effective communicator. Right? It focuses on learning strategies for building connections with people around you. Okay, understanding the motivation of the people and successfully leading small groups to accomplish tasks. Uh, this part ends in a comprehensive team building project that brings all of your skills together, including public speaking. So the last part here will be uh, some kind of a project uh, which will bring all the skills that you have learned in the first four levels, okay, including public speaking. So that will be your final speech will be that about talking about your experience in your past four levels. But there will be certain projects where you will have to create a small group. Okay, I have to accomplish a task. You have to manage that group and accomplish the uh, project. So don't worry, all of this, uh, you will be guided very well with your mentors and the VP education. All are there to help you, uh, handhold you people and uh, uh, help you in taking your project and completing your speeches, etc. The next part is the uh, persuasive influence. So here also, uh, it will help you build your skill as an innovative communicator and leader. Right, uh, your focus is on how to negotiate a positive outcome. See, this is about persuasive influence. So he, this involves some kind of a negotiation. How to negotiate a positive outcome, uh, a positive outcome, together with building strong interpersonal communication and public speaking skills. So a lot of things are involved here: negotiation, interpersonal communication, public speaking, uh, arriving at a positive outcome, uh, etc. Now, this project emphasizes developing leadership skills to use in complex situations, as well as creating innovative solutions to challenges. So uh, this will end up in you taking up a high performance leadership project. So you'll have to end in the end, in the final uh, level five, you will be asked to take a high performance leadership project, uh, wherein you will have to display your leadership skills in that project. Okay, you will have to uh, hold all your team together. You should be having a team of yourselves uh, for yourself for that project. You should hold the team together and accomplish that project. And based on how you have done that, you should come and give a speech. Um, so that will be the last speech of, uh, of your level five of persuasive influence. And then comes the presentation mastery. Uh, this part uh, will uh, help you build your skills as an accomplished public speak, and this is all about presentation, right? So the focus is on learning how an audience responds to you and improving your connection with audience members. So the response of audience when you're presenting something is, is very, very important. Uh, this project contributes to developing an understanding of effective public speaking technique, including speech writing and speech delivery, okay? And this, the, this project ends in an extended speech that will allow you to apply what you have learned. So whatever you have learned, you should prepare a speech for that. And that will be your final speech for presentation mass. So in, during your course of your, uh, uh, doing your path, you will be asked to give various presentations, etc. cetera. Uh, so that will basically help you build your presentation skills. And then finally, we have the visionary communication. So this is where it will help you build your skills as a strategic communicator and leader. The project on this path focus on developing your skills for sharing information with the group, planning communications, and creating innovative solutions. Uh, what is emphasized here is speech writing and speech delivery. Okay, this again, the, this path will end uh, in giving a uh, uh, 
you know, uh, this path culminates in the development and launch of a long term personal or professional vision. So in the speech that you give towards the end, you will have to talk about your long term personal or profession, uh, professional vision. That is how you end this speech. So before I go to the next path, I know it's 924. Uh, uh, next, uh, sorry, not next path, next topic. Any, any questions so far on pathways? Mukund Kamal, they said, so just want to ask about the project. Like I choose the dynamic leadership. So what kind of project you are like uh, at last level uh, we have to do? It's a very long term or like on a day, uh, only day basis? It, it it depends on what project you choose, uh, Kamal, right? So if you if you uh, if you select a project that requires mm -hmm. a lot of time uh, and effort, right? Mm -hmm. uh, then obviously you will take time in doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, some example could be uh, like mm -hmm. if I if I remember correctly, uh, mm -hmm. one of my earlier mentors took up a speech craft as a project okay so they got the members new members they conducted the speech craft some eight sessions okay. right they did the convocation etc and finally they came and gave a speech on how it all went okay. they attended the uh, how how the speech craft got concluded yeah okay. so that could be one project there could be different projects like uh, uh, taking up ownership of a Failing club, another example, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, bringing it up to speed or getting it, uh, making it alive again. Okay. That could be another project. Okay. So uh, where you'll have to apply your leadership skills, okay. right? So the, those that and uh, but you will be you will be guided through uh, each mm -hmm. and every speech, each and every project. Okay, the, the Toastmasters International Education Material is one of the best. Mm -hmm. So you people have to, before you give a speech, you have to go through entire material that is there for your speech. Mm -hmm. It is a must. Mm -hmm. yeah. speech, so, speech, I understood that whatever we will finish in that project, so we have to explain in a uh, speech manner, like public, in a better way of uh, speaking whatever it is. But yeah, you have to, you have to come and to... speak about uh, the challenges you faced. Correct, correct, How correct. did you accomplish? So, How did you correct. overcome the challenges? My question was like, uh, sometimes project may take us six months as well, or we can choose project kind of, okay, it will finish in five days as well, or it will be a big project. It is totally up to you. The best thing okay. would be to speak to your mentor. Okay. Okay, speak to your mentor and come out with a project mm. and okay. then do it. Like okay. it is up to you. I can't tell you that you know you have to take something which will last for six months or a year. It's a totally uh, okay. there could be small projects but challenging projects. Even okay. there, you have to display your leadership skills, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there is no uh, uh, rule that you have to do or you have to do a six month project. Okay, got it, got it. Sure. Okay. Any other questions, please? Yeah, Mukund. Yeah. Uh, this uh, study material you are talking about. Yeah. How to uh, access that means? No, you once you log in, uh, you have full access to it. No, once you select your pathway. Yes. Once you log in and you select your pathway, you have to launch level one, level two, level three, level four. You you have those levels listed in okay. in front of you. So once you launch, you go to level one, and then it will uh, you click on the icebreaker for example, the first speech. And then okay. you start, uh, you know, you start navigating to the screens. You can okay. go screen by screen and then, you know, read all through the material, understand everything. Uh, uh, as I said, give your first assessment, like where you stand now before the speech. Okay? okay. And then once you give the speech, come back to the website and fill the second part, which is where you, where you are now after giving the speech. Is it the same as it was before? Or... Have you, do you think you have improved on those parameters? So you will be given six or seven parameters. You will have to rate between one to five, whether you are really bad at it or you are good at it. Okay, mm -hmm. after you do the speech, come back, you will have the same parameters. You have to say whether you have improved on each parameter or not. 
and then you click on complete as i said once you click complete a mail goes to your vp education who will then approve your speech okay thank you so it, it is very easy once you once you log in you can just simply navigate screen by screen and then you you'll see the entire material has anybody done that till now has anybody gone and uh, yeah i have done the base camp through base camp you will get so the revenue correct exactly from the base camp you will go uh, you will get your once you click on your base camp it will take you to your pathway that you have selected and in the pathway you have to launch then it okay. will take to your level and then in the level you will have this all the speeches that you have to give got it got it okay. if you find difficulty then please you know you can contact me i will help you through I'm going through that if you want sure thank you any other questions please or can i go ahead with the next one okay Okay, the next two is mentoring. Okay, uh, now I want to know how many of you know who your mentors are and have as a mentor been assigned to you. Please speak up. Please tell me if any of you. I know my mentor. Okay. I also know my mentor. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What about uh, Pushpa? I'm not yet. No, I have not. I'm not got uh, my mentor. You have not yet got your mentor. Okay, Deepak. No, Mukund. I have not yet uh, got okay. my mentor here in Gabby's. I have not. Okay. Got any mentor? Yeah. Rishi. Yes, I had spoken to my mentor. You have spoken to your mentor. Okay, Rima. I know my mentor, but I haven't spoken to her yet. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sudhir? No, I have not assigned. Not assigned. Okay. Ankur? I have also not been assigned. Mentor. Sanjana? Sanjana, are you there? Rahul? Uh, yes, I, I have spoken to my mentor. You have spoken to your mentor. Okay. All right. Uh, Kamal also has spoken to him. So the point about mentorship, right? Uh, it's a two-way street. Okay. Um, the One thing I would request is uh, you are the owner of your communication, uh, uh, communication project. Right, a mentor is there to help you, uh, and they might reach out to you and nudge you and ask you to take up speeches. But I'm sure you will all agree with me when I say it is always good when it comes from you to give a speech, to take up a role, to add to the DCP points. You know, when it comes from you, it is always good because it is, uh, as is, as uh, you know. You are taking charge of your of improving your own communication skill, and uh, it shows that you are taking ownership of improving your own communication skill. So, uh, my my request is, uh, the mentor will get in touch with you and will help you, but you go back and talk to your mentor. And I can tell you, I can give you an example. You can take Sri Hari here. Sri Hari is my mentee. He contacts me whenever uh, he has to give a speech. He prepares the speeches. And uh, I try and uh, advise to him as to what can be done, what cannot be done in that speech, how can it can be improved, et cetera. And whatever I have learned in my experience as a Toastmaster, I try to impart that to him um, as a suggestion. And uh, it, you know that's how it goes. So uh, like Sri Hari, who has you know, kind of taken charge of his own communication, uh, uh, improving his communication skills, I humbly request all of you to do that as well. Okay. Uh, 
you can go to your mentor whenever you want right the mentor he may he or she may not contact you immediately because you know they have their own work and other things going on in their lives so, but uh, over a period of time uh, give them some time and they will come back to you that much i can definitely uh, uh, guarantee you okay but take that ownership take that initiative go into your pathway start going through your study material uh, in that pathway right it is very rich very useful uh, people you know uh, outside toast masters don't have access to such a good education material we are privileged to have that lot of effort has gone in building those material right uh, uh, make full use of that you will have lot of doubts then reach out to your mentor and ask whatever questions you want to ask right uh, so, so that would be my request that i have make uh, I, i will go back to the vpx and we will make sure that we will assign a mentor as soon as possible to all of you since all of you are new we are still trying to figure out who your mentors can be and how much they will be available so uh, give us some time and we will uh, uh, assign a mentor okay so that is mentoring now let's quickly go to the next part i will uh, try and uh, you know uh, uh, rush this through now there is one more thing in toast masters so so far we have spoken about communication skills there is one more track in toast master and that is a leadership track now how does the hierarchy stand in toast masters international no at the top of the thing is members that is you me we, we are all members right so few members together form a club few clubs together i hope you guys can see my screen right yes yes uh, yes yes we can see the screen okay so members yes. few members together form a club few clubs together form an area few areas together form a division few divisions together form a district and few districts together form a region and on top of that we have the board of directors so this is the composition of the toastmasters international yeah members club areas divisions districts regions so this is the hierarchy uh, yeah and we will go to the next part next slide which is how what are the various roles that are there in each of the uh, each of the uh, areas right at a club level you all know that these are the people that you can see on the screen so you have the president you have the vp education there are three vps vp education vp membership vp public relations then you have the secretary who will take minutes of the meeting you have the treasurer who will keep track of the finances of the club and then you have the sergeant at arms who will make sure uh, that the the meeting room etc is all right and it gives a kick start to the meeting yeah so this is the roles of a club so the uh, the president as you know is the head he is the ceo he or she is the ceo of the club then you have the vp education who you all know like sudar ma myself and jaspreet we are the vp education uh, we are in charge of um, you know uh, we are in charge of all the awards education awards that the members should get uh, we are in charge of making sure that the members are giving the speeches properly mentors are assigned to the mentees etc uh, vp membership are the ones who makes sure that people renew on time new members come uh, there is fresh blood in the club and current members renew uh, uh, etc and then the public relation is one who gives publicity to the club you know uh, creating posters and then uh, 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 writing uh, articles on the website uh, creating newsletters etc this is the role of the vp public relation the secretary is the one who um, you know who uh, notes down the minutes of each meeting 
the treasurer i said as i said keeps track of the finances and sergeant at arms is the one who starts the meeting and make sure the meeting room is ready and then gives a kick start to the meeting okay and the mid level roles at the area is the area director and the division director uh and uh, then you also have uh, you know like the district director at the district level you have the district director the program quality director the club growth director the finance manager administration manager region advisor and international director these are all the roles that are there at the district level and the region level um so basically this is the leadership track so many of you can become uh, you know you can start off from being a sergeant at arms you can become a treasurer or a secretary and then you can become one of the vice president it's not necessary that you have to follow this route uh, you can become a vp education also in at the very first instance if you have the capability um <clears throat> uh, and so on so that is basically what the leadership track is all about you can once uh, you are done with the club you can move to the area level you can become an area director where you have few clubs under you right as i said few clubs together form an area right and then a few divisions uh, you can become a division director where you have few divisions under you so it it goes like that and uh, so that is basically the leadership track okay and this we already one spoke. question one question yeah. it is a like mandatory to play leadership role or like it is a voluntary it's voluntary it's not okay. uh, necessary that you have to play a leadership role it okay. is there for you to do it right got it got it yeah it is there for you to do it you can go ahead when 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 the founders or the current uh, members or sorry or the current officers request you to take up a role it's an opportunity opportunity for you to learn leadership skills mm -hmm. okay uh, and then getting started we just went through this you will get an uh, uh, welcome email right you click on get started and then you follow the steps which is basically um, assessment and then new membership role a uh, new membership profile etc make sure that you, uh, you click on your profile and make sure all the information there is correct right and then you select your pathway take an assessment select your pathway uh, and then launch your first level etc so that is basically getting started and that is what i mentioned view your profile and then make sure everything is correct over there uh, then again logging in into pathways where you can take an assessment as uh, we have gone through that earlier and uh, this is your uh, this is when you come to your first project which is the icebreaker as i said earlier all parts begin with the icebreaker the uh, introductory speech is a great way to give fellow club members information about your background your interests your ambitions uh, etc so there is no structure or such as your uh, for this speech like you will have to have a structure in your upcoming speeches but an icebreaker is all about yourself for 4 to 6 minutes we we'll have to go we we'll have to talk about in what about yourself in whatever way you want to speak right as uh, every everyone begins with this level 1 project that's the ice break and then you were asking about the awards and the recognition so some of the awards that we have uh, as you all know you have the best speaker award we have the best evaluator award best table topic speaker this is all for each meeting okay the best tagle role player Uh, the best toastmaster the best um, uh, tagle role player the best toastmaster is basically been the general evaluator the toastmaster of the day the table topic master okay what we do we give certificates as you would have all seen in the group uh, a, a, a certificate would be sent to you if you win any of these awards and when you complete a level a posters will go out um, about uh, you completing a level And, and similarly for a pathway posters will go out this is the way we in gabis recognize the achievements uh, there is something also there which is not part of this orientation which is the various levels the clubs get from the divisions and the districts so that is for a there's a different topic for another day what kind of awards a club can get but for now uh, for the orientation this is basically what we have yeah uh, what does the club expect from you whole hearted part participation in the meetings uh, your contribution to the dcp points 
your participation in the contest, right? This is what, uh, so uh, very quickly on the DCP points, a distinguished club president points, it is called DCP points. So each club uh, will have to, uh, you know, uh, complete certain points. So uh, there are certain criteria uh, based on education, membership, public relation, all these three put together, there are certain tasks that you have to complete for which you will get a DCP point. So if you get 10 DCP points, then you become a, a distinguished club president for that particular term, uh, for that particular year. For DCP points, it is always one year. So for example, for an education award, you should have four people giving, completing the level ones, some three people completing the level two, uh, one people, one person completing level four and level five. So like that, there are certain criteria that a club will have to achieve. So every time they do that, they will get one point. Uh, every time they complete one criteria, they get one point like that. So you 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 publish your newsletter, right? As a part of a VP public relations, you get one point. You get uh, some 60% uh, of your members renewed, uh, their membership, you get a point. So like that, if you get 10 points in a year, you become a DCP, um, a distinguished club. And that is what it is called. So like that, there are certain awards that the district and the division have uh, that we will have. That That's a topic for another day. Another day. That, that is not part of the uh, orientation. Uh, last slide, how we, uh, sorry, how we communicate with you. Uh, normally here we use WhatsApp. Right in our club, we use WhatsApp. That's how we communicate. Uh, the WhatsApp can be in a <clears throat> discussion group or the announcement group, or it could be one on one. Um, uh, and we could also communicate through our website, our newsletter, uh, etc. And there could be some announcements made in the club meeting, right? Uh, someone can send an email to you. The officers could send an email to you. So these are some of the ways that we communicate. But normally, more often than not, it is WhatsApp. All right, I will stop here. So that was the end of the orientation session. Uh, again, my sincere apologies for starting this very, very late. Uh, it's really, we are really overshot the time, uh, but I thought I'm assuming it is worth it. So any, any questions we have, we will spend just three minutes if you, any of you have any questions. Now, do you guys, got, can you please come on camera and say if you got an idea of what Toastmasters is all about? One question, Mukun, from my side. Am I audible? Amal. Amal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this, this mentor, like mentorship will be always with uh, every member or only for newcomers or one pathway, mentor will be available, then you have to take care by your own. Is it in that way? No, every person will have a new member, whether old or new. I have a member. Okay. Saurav Dutta is my mentor. I have okay. a mentor. Yeah. And it will be always be the same person till you are in the same club, right? Uh, like a uh, like officer role, I, I, what I know about the master key, every six months, uh, roles of officer role will change. So same way, mentor will also change, or it will be same throughout the, your journey of the club. Usually it will be the same, but if you okay. think uh, you want a different mentor, you can always approach the VP education and request for another mentor. Okay. Okay. But not be the same. Okay. I'll quickly go around the table because I want each one of you to tell me whether this is okay or not. Uh, so Kamal, what do you think? Quickly, two sentences about uh, what you have understood today's meeting. Actually, I also joined late, but uh, I uh, I got to know just now that you have started late. So I think I did not miss anything. Earlier, I was thinking I missed a lot. But uh, I got to know some things from earlier, my research on to Google. And whatever doubt I have, I, you all already cleared in that session. And I, now I have a complete uh, idea about Toastmaster from like resources to uh, growth of career, well, not career, but uh, full path of post, postmaster from club to 
uh, district level as well. But these ones uh, information were not available easily, which I got to today. Yes. What about yourself? Rishi, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm here. Um, yeah, um, the session was very enlightening. Mm -hmm. I got to know especially about the the pathways, the levels, 20 speeches, and with the difference in the information of pathways that have been taken, um, I am more sure about which pathway I'm about to choose. So thank you very much. Shri, are you there? Yes, Mogan. It was very helpful. Uh, everything. Uh, have a big, uh, big picture on what Toastmasters is and how it can be helpful for us. And just that one uh, doubt I have. When you mentioned about the, um, the structure that is the area director, club officer, all that. Outside of Toastmaster speeches or the role preparation, how much of the time do we have to spend if we volunteer for that uh, officers as an officer? Uh, you will have to uh, devote some time. You have to commit some time. Yeah. Okay. How much time? It depends on the composition of clubs. For example, if you become an area director, you will have five clubs under you. Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, you will have to keep talking to the presidents and the VP education of those, all the five clubs. So they are your team, the VP heads, the presidents, right? You'll have to talk to them, understand how things are going. You'll have to attend their meetings once in a while. Okay, okay. You'll have to guide them. They will come to you for any questions. You should mm -hmm. be, you should give them time. Okay. So, yeah. So that is, uh, you should be able to commit some time. Otherwise, there is no point in getting there. Right, right. Okay, just uh, on, in continuation of Shreya equation, like they have also some KRS, KPIs like in corporate for uh, uh, measure the performance of that particular role. Yeah, as you have mentioned, there's a hierarchy, right? So I believe mm -hmm. there should be some metric to measure. There is a metric to measure. Even they will also have to attend certain club meetings. Uh, I, I will find out what is the metrics and I will come back to you. Okay. Uh, Sudhir? Yeah, uh, Mukund, I hardly knew anything about Toastmasters earlier. So now, uh, but I view I got. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Ankur? Hey, Mukund. Hi. Yeah, uh, so I attended uh, previous two uh, Toastmaster meetings. So I were I was quite aware of the roles. But uh, yeah, I was very confused about like what are the tracks as everybody kept talking about tracks and their uh, first uh, the, this to, uh, uh, icebreaker speeches, etc. So yeah, got a lot of clarity that side. Uh, and otherwise, uh, the roles uh, at the like area level, region level was very informational. So yeah, it was a quite uh, uh, educational session. Thank you. Anjana, are you there? No, I guess Sanjana is not there. All right. Thank you very much. Again, again, I my sincere apologies. Uh, there's a slip up from my side. I couldn't schedule the meeting, although I had sent the link. Uh, that's the reason why it took up some time. I hope nobody has missed the meeting because of that. Uh, but anyway, it is recorded now, and then uh, we can also share it in the group uh, for you people to go through that again if you want to. But anyway, thank you so much. I hope it has been of some use. Uh, to you all. Thank you and have a very good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.